Porsche never won a Grand Prix apart from with that car. It's an eight cylinder, very advanced engine for the time. It's a very important part of history. For the French Grand Prix of 1962, naturally everyone was determined to make as good a time as possible and everyone was there. Rolling in from Germany came the Porsche team, making a welcome return after absence since Monte Carlo. The implacable Dan Gurney of California was picked by Baron Huschke von Henstein, the Porsche team manager, for 1962. I think uh, towards the end of the race, why we may be in pretty good shape. Seventeen starters, 54 laps, 220 miles. Now, let's all keep cool. Quick, give us a lick. The 804 in the French Grand Prix at Rouen, uh, driven by Dan Gurney, profited from retirements by Clark in the monocoque Lotus 25 and by Graham Hill in the BRM V8. Gurney was now very handily placed. But in the Porsche pit, once again von Hanstein was worried. Bonnier's gearbox and engine did not augur well for Gurney's, as the roughness of the circuit took its toll. Dan ended up winning the race. Nothing can touch the Porsche now, for Surtees too is in trouble. So they'd just won the French Grand Prix. Immediately afterwards, they had this non-championship local race, and they finished first and second in that. Well, this was, you know, big news. To lanky, quiet, and likable Dan Gurney, the fruits of victory at 101.38 miles an hour. Jimmy Clark was great. Graham Hill made himself great. But Dan Gurney was almost the equal of Jimmy. It's just that in period, he was always known as Fiddly Dan. But he couldn't resist fiddling with the settings on suspension and engine and everything. He was always fiddling with it. And he justified this by saying, well, you know, I might find an edge. Well, he might, but in practice he didn't. Now, they'd been testing at the Nürburgring and Dan had run a full 15 laps there, which was a Grand Prix distance. And he lapped in 8 minutes 44 seconds, which was a fantastic time. So they had high hopes going to their home German Grand Prix. Dan came up against Graham Hill at his best in the BRM, and John Surtees, who was something of a Nürburgring specialist. Those three had a race-long battle, and Dan was doing very well in second place when he suddenly became aware that there was something banging against his calf muscles. And when he looked down, he realized to his horror that the battery had come adrift and it was sliding forward every time he hit the brakes. If those contacts on it short out against one of the aluminium fuel tanks, it will melt a hole in the fuel tank and probably ignite the fuel that's in it. So he had to lean down and try to get the thing jammed under his legs to keep it secure. It's hardly surprising that Graham Hill won the race, John Surtees finished second, and Dan in the Porsche 804 finished third. But it, it was a defeat, but it was a very honourable defeat. It was a car that Dan Gurney, you know, won the French Grand Prix in, in 1962, which is before I even started racing. So, you know, to get to drive a great man's car like his is very special for me. Um, it took some getting used to because it it's a very small sort of rev band on it. But once you get going up the hill, it was actually going very, very well. But you feel very vulnerable, you know, there's no seat belts and all that sort of thing, which we got used to. But in 62, they didn't have them. There's only two in the world. Uh, this is the one that won the uh, French Grand Prix in 1962 uh, with Dan Gurney, a uh, very special driver too. So it's, um, it's, it should be here for the 70th uh, celebration for Porsche. At the end of the year, it turned out that that flat eight air-cooled Formula One project had cost the equivalent of £550,000. Cooper, with Jack Brabham, had won the 
Formula One Manufacturers Championship and the Drivers Formula One World Championship for a budget of £10,000. Ferry Porsche pulled the plug and Porsche never announced that they were abandoning their Formula One program. They just didn't enter any more Formula One races.